Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to JKS Tech Lab. I'm JK Swopes, and today I want to talk about how you can customize attributes coming out of Ping Federate. Uh, specifically, we're going to take a look at user ID, employee number, employee ID. Um, we want to actually customize that and send it in a different format to the application that we're using. And basically, why you would do something like this, let's say, I don't know, maybe maybe you're pulling a feed from an internal application or HR application or something. You're sending that to another third party application and it needs to be of a certain length or, you know, it's expecting it to be a certain length and what you're pulling out of your active directory doesn't match because the system that sent it, maybe it added extra characters or removed characters or something like that. So we want to be able to use Ogonal to customize that. Now, um, this is just my, again, this is just my test environment, but you can use this, you know, when you're actually testing and trying to configure stuff in an enterprise situation, you can use these same methods. So right now I'm using the, the IAM showcase. I, I suggest if you're doing any type of um, IDP, you know, service provider configuration, you use the IAM showcase just to kind of see what your attributes are going to look like. But the contract we're sending right now is just really basic. We're sending the subject, email, employee number, first name, last name. I have this, this instance of Ping Federate is tied to my test um, Active Directory environment so I can pull domain users. Um, so what we wanna do is before we get started, let's, let's say test user three. And let's see what information we got for this user. So there's our subject which is this username then we're pulling first name here's a fake email address employee number user id so let's say this for whatever reason this employee has four digits but we wanted everybody who signs into this application to be an eight digit number we're going to use ogonal to actually customize that so what we need to do is go over to the actual connection for the service provider that we're sending this information to and edit the contract and you can see everything right now is pulling from the policy contract but what we want to do is change employee number to an expression so that we can start editing and i could write it right in here and save it but i prefer to go over to this page which is basically your expression page unless you actually test it so now i'm not a coder i'm not a developer i'm not a software developer or anything like that um but from time to time, you do have to use Ogonal in certain situations to just, you know, customize attributes, at least for, you know, in Ping Federate, they, they use Ogonal. Um, Okta and some of the other ones may use other languages or expressions or scripting. But this is it. And I would say uh, on the Ping website, there there's like examples and they have, you know, a bunch of different posts and blogs and resources as far as Ogonal. But what I also find myself doing is... Um, you know, obviously just searching, <laughs> searching for Ogonal because Ogonal is not unique to uh, Ping. But if you can't find exactly what you're looking for in terms of the parameters, um, you can also do a search for like different Java parameters because Ogonal is built on top of that. So they, they, they're they very similar. So I find myself looking for different stuff like, hey, if I want to do a prefix, if I want to do a, a suffix, or if I want to remove this, you know, what does it look like? What type of parameters do I have? Oh, I got a two string or a length or whatever. Um, you could do that. So, yeah, don't don't worry about um, having to be a software developer. It's not that's that's not what this is. Um, and you do not have to be a software developer to be an IAM professional. So, uh, like I said, what we're going to do, um, I always uh, I always, you know, try to start. I'm not going to say from scratch because um, I keep a, a running list of stuff that that works for me as far as like the expressions but when i start it i try to see how much i can remember in terms of the syntax um just to see you know see how how i'm learning as far as the language goes um see if i you know because it, it helps to understand what you're trying to do so first thing we want to do is we're going to create um let's just call it call it employee num so we're going to say employee num equals and now we need to tell it what the what it equals. So this get. And now we need to tell it where where are you pulling this information from? Well, we we're actually pulling it from the real employee number. So we need to tell it that. And then we say we want to print it to a string. 
So that's our first part. Basically, this is saying this here is going to equal this as a string. Now we can define um, what we want to do to this as long as, you know, this parameter matches. So we're going to say, and like I said, I know, I know you software developers probably like, bro, that's not how you explain it. But anyway, this is how I understand it. So like I said, uh, we want to do the same thing. We want to say employee num length. Now we want to define the length of this. And what do we say? Eight. So we want to say if anything is not equal to eight. So that's what that exclamation equal. So anything that's not equal to eight, what do we want to do? We want to do something to it. Um, there is a string, an Apache string for left pad. I am not going to write that all out. I have that in my scratch pad here. Um, I, I know there's probably other ways to do this, but this is the way that ended up working for me. So I always like to stretch this out so I can see what I'm doing. So basically we're saying, all right, here's what employee num is going to be. And we can name this whatever we want as long as it matches. And then we're going to say, once we do that, if it's not equal to eight, do this to it. Left pad it. What are we going to left pad it with? We're going to say, okay, you need to add to employee num. What I want you to add is, uh, I want you to say it needs to be eight. And if it's not eight, you need to pad it with zeros. Of course, this can be anything in there. And then finally, we're going to end it with uh, employee num. So, I'm not saying uh, I may have missed something here. We're going to see. Uh, Ping will actually let us know. But what's cool on this page is we can put stuff in these values so that we can test it. So you see, I've already been testing this a bunch um, just because, like I said, this is just trying to figure out how to do stuff like this. You do a lot of testing. So let's see uh, if we test it. Something's wrong with my expression. So what is it? I believe maybe this so make sure nothing else looks crazy let's see yep so it was that it was that comma right there but now you can see it added since this is five digits it added three zeros um but if i go like this then it's just going to give me exactly what 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 it is which is what we want if it's already eight digits then we don't need it to pad anything if it's anything less than that then we want to pad it so if i take off one of those digits it should give me one and like i said this could be this could be whatever you want um this doesn't have to be zero that's pretty common um to pad something with zeros but it, this could be fives for whatever reason if you want to pad it with fives um so it's going to do the same thing so if I have a two digit number, it's going to fill it up with five. So you can, you can customize this obviously however you want. Uh, but the basic idea, I think you get it or, you know, hopefully this, this kind of gives you an idea, but we want ours to be zeros. So this is telling me, I'm not saying this is the employee number. I could put whatever, I, whatever I want in here. I just want to check the digits to see if it's going to pad it properly. And it does. So I'm done. I'm going to say update. And now you can see everything else is pulling from the policy contract, but this is pulling from an expression that looks directly at, at whatever um, data store we're using, you know, for this, this um, application. And it's, it's going to pad it like we need it. So let's save it. And now we're going to test it. So now who do we have? Test user three. So remember the root. Uh, that ID was 3333, three, three, I believe. So now, see it. So test user three, just test user three, test. So now you can see this is what gets sent to the application because of the that orthogonal expression we put in there. It padded the 3333 three, three, three with four zeros. So if this was five digits, it would give me three zeros. If it was six digits, it would give me two. And I, it could be whatever length I want. I can say I need this to be 11 characters or 13 or whatever your application needs needs it to be. You can you can edit it. Uh, but the main thing, uh, once you find <laughs> once you find an expression that works, always save it. I have a running you know text document with all my different 
different expressions in there. Like I said, there's been situations where I've had to add a specific prefix, maybe that designates a certain line of business or something like that, or remove a prefix, or like I said, remove remove zeros. There's there's all types of stuff you can do. This one is just specifically how do you pad it, you know, pad an ID number um, using Argon. So again, let's just take a look really quick at the expression. Let's pull it out so again employee number and i this can be anything so i can this can be fully employee number this could just say emp whatever as long as they match throughout the expression you're good this can't change this has to be exactly what you're pulling from your data store so this if if employee number is what it is in your active directory then that's what you need to put here if it's something else in whatever directory you're using then that's what you need to put here so again we're saying hey for employee num get employee number print it to a string if that string is less than eight, I want you to do this to it. Left pad it. How are we going to left pad it? We're going to left pad it to eight digits. And we're going to left pad it with zeros. So that's what it's doing. Um, like I said, there's not one central repository for, for Agonal, but Ping does have um, some really good examples and some blog posts and different things as far as how to use Agonal within their system. So I would definitely suggest reading through that. And then just searching, you know, different, like I said, Apache has Agonal stuff, searching through different Java things. Um, but you absolutely do not need to be a coder to be able to um, have a professional career as an IAM um, professional. You don't have to be a coder, but, you know, you may come across stuff like this where you need to go in and customize some attributes using like I said, for in, in my instance, in Ping Federate, it is Agonal, but it may be a different type of scripting language in, you know, another platform. So uh, hopefully this helps for those of you out there that are using Ping and trying to figure out how you can go through and customize, you know, some parameters. Like I said, and this could be this. It, it, I could do this for any of these. Like I could use, you know, Agonal for my email. If I want to do something to my email, maybe I want to pull the email, but I want to drop the domain off. You can use Agonal to do that. Maybe I want to pull certain groups, you know, and send those over. I could do that if I were sending groups, if I want to do something to the first name. So it's really flexible. You just got to find what it is that you're trying to do. Um, and like I said, try to piece some things together. It's a lot of trial and error, um, unless you're just really familiar with, you know, writing Java or writing Agonal or stuff like that. But for me, I can definitely find my way to what I need to do. Um, just by looking at different resources, looking through my notes, trying different parameters and things like that. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you got any questions. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Peace.